Hello to all of our friends in India. We are making a short video today of the SpecFinder HD, the gemological version. And we're just going to cover a basic uh, steps to help it easier once you all get this demonstration unit. So what we're going to do is just uh, start in. We've got a setup here of the SpecFinder system itself. It's hooked into a monitor and it'll just be a little bit easier to follow for purposes of the video demonstration. Uh, to focus in on a larger screen. But you'll be able to do this in your ordinary setup if you have this unit in your shop. Uh, you'll be able to actually hook a video cable into a separate monitor if you want to use that for display purposes. So as you can see the SpecFinder unit, once it's turned on, you'll come to a desktop. And that desktop, the SpecFinder operates in a Windows 7 environment. And there's three icons on the desktop. Um, of course, the recycle bin, which is standard, uh, but then there's also a SpecFinder camera program icon, and then also the ring light control. And we kept it simple just with these icons because these are the icons that you're primarily going to be using in your application. So what we'll do is go ahead and open the uh, SpecFinder camera software, just double clicking on that. And when you double click on that, what you'll see is you have several options to choose from to open the camera. And what you want to do is open the user profile. And what the user profile is, there's certain camera settings that have been stored. And you can change these for yourselves just depending on your own application and your own preferences. But we've loaded some of these in and we just call these diamond parameters. So this is a user profile. We'll go ahead and click on that and what you'll see is a dialog box that opens and we've stored this under the um, under the document library which is standard on Windows 7 operating systems and you'll see uh, the diamond profile so just click on that and then open that profile and now it, it's going to take you into the software which is the actual camera software and when you are in the camera software, to actually open the camera up in the uh, upper left corner, there is a little camera icon that has a green triangle. And if you click on that icon, uh, the camera itself is going to open. And it'll take a minute to actually open. Uh, what it's doing is retrieving uh, the profile. So you'll see a dialog box that, that uh, pops up and uh, then you'll get an image of a diamond. Now there's another step to take because we've also uh, loaded some additional parameters. What you originally opened was a profile, a camera profile, and now we're going to open some uh, camera parameters. And these are specific uh, settings that we've made within uh, the, the contrast button, the gain button, and other camera parameters that we thought uh, helped in making a, a diamond uh, give the best possible image. So we're going to go under the file menu and we're uh, going to go under load parameters from file and click on that. And that's going to take us back to the standard Windows dialog box under the documents library where we stored the diamond parameter. And so we're going to go ahead and open that and when we do so you're going to see changes that are made to the diamond and uh, you also have the ability to go in and change these camera parameters and you'll be able to do that when you spend more time with the system and see what uh, settings that you prefer uh, for your particular diamond that you're looking at. So now that this is, uh, this is open um, you may see um, the diamond, uh, you may want that a little more round. And what you'll need to do on the, on the left side of the screen, there's a toolbar. And that allows you, uh, there's, there's a little magnifying glass that allows different aspect ratios. And the one that you want to click has a one to one ratio. And that's to display the image in its normal size. And in doing so, uh, you'll see the diamond look as it actually is. And um, to move the diamond in the screen, uh, you can actually click your icon, click your mouse, and uh, left-click that, and hold it, 
and you can actually move uh, the diamond itself around uh, around the screen. So why don't you go ahead and zoom out, Tom? What we're going to do then is uh, another key piece to getting a, a good image with the spec finder system is a light dome that we have. And so we're going to simply put the light dome on top of the wire stone holder. And what that does is it gives a more uniform lighting environment. And right now, uh, the lighting is all coming from the base, uh, the dark well base of the, of the spec finder system. Uh, and there's a, a very strong um, light that's in the base of the gemological system. And it's a, it's a dimmable lighting and there's a large control knob on the back of the spec finder system that we can um, increase or decrease the amount of light that's actually in the light well. So um, we're turning that light up and with the light dome we get a very even lighting around the diamond. So now what we're going to do is show uh, very simply how to annotate our um, uh, put a circle or even text uh, on the surface of a diamond. So let's say we're looking at, at the diamond and we want to uh, we want to put an annotation on the diamond. We want to highlight an inclusion or circle and inclusion. On the, um, on the left toolbar there is a, a series of different choices that you have in order to make uh, overlays or annotations onto the actual image that you're looking at. And so um, what we're going to do uh, is click on this draw circle icon and what that's going to allow us to do is um, click in the center of what we want to highlight, click and hold and then drag and, and that will increase or decrease uh, the circle. And we have the same options with squares with lines or we can freehand draw and we can also change uh, the color and we can change the font of the um, of the overlays that we're working with so if we want to highlight a particular um, um, inclusion or a particular uh, defect or feature we can do that um, and then what we'll do here is is we will add lettering so if we want to and put a text um, over that circle that we've drawn in order to identify what we've highlighted. Um, we just click on that letter and then uh, a dialog box appears which we can go ahead and then enter uh, text which we'll just go ahead and put inclusion for this example. Click OK and that word appears uh, in the font size that we've chosen and in the color that we've chosen it appears where we click the icon and then we can do if we want we want to draw a line um, we can draw a line and so forth now if we want to save that image with the annotation um, recorded we go under um, one of the menu options that says draw and measure so we click on the draw and measure drop down menu and you'll see that there is an option that says save image and drawings. So we go ahead and click on that. And then it's going to open a dialog box in the standard Windows format. And then we can choose where we want to save that image on our hard drive. So um, I'm saving these under the libraries directory. And under the pictures uh, directory, I click on that. Um, I've created. Uh, within that directory, a folder uh, simply called uh, SpecFinder Images. So I'll double click to open that folder and then I'll go ahead and name uh, this image and I'll simply call it Diamond Inclusion. And you'll see that um, the image saves in a BMP file format and it saves in that format when you store an image uh, with the overlays on it. Uh, there are other file format types that you can save uh, if, you, if you want to save an image without an overlay. You can save it in a PNG file format or you can save it in a JPEG file format. But when you're saving with image overlays, it will save in a BMP file format. So we'll go ahead and save that. 
Now, if I want to open that and display it, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this screen. And I'll just go uh, through my Windows Explorer, which will open up my different directories. I'll open up the picture library, the Spec Finder Images folder, and there you can see uh, my uh, diamond inclu inclusion image that I just saved. And uh, as that opens up in the Windows Photo Viewer, which is a, a default program installed on your Spec Finder system, you'll see that this image is opened uh, that shows the inclusion overlay that we added. And just uh, with the standard Windows Photo Viewer, uh, you can also uh, magnify, of course it'll be a digital magnification, but you can uh, magnify the object if you want to. And so we're gonna go ahead and close that out. But that uh, shows you very simply how you can capture uh, an image using the, uh, the Spec Finder camera and software. So we're going to go ahead and delete off the annotation that we put on. We just do that by hitting the big red X that's in the uh, bottom of the toolbar on the left side of your screen. So we're going to remove that. And then if you would like to shoot a video, um, we can also uh, not only shoot still images, but we can shoot a, uh, a video with the Spec Finder system. So if we go under the File menu, um, there is an option that says uh, record video sequence. We can simply hit the record video sequence and then it's going to ask us to create a file. So we'll go ahead and create the file. Again, it's going to want us to store that file. And under the libraries directory, um, I'll click on videos. And in there I created a folder that says spec finder videos. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that to open that folder. And then uh, I'm going to save this, uh, this file name and the default file format for the video is an AVI file format. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as Diamond Video. So I'm going to save that. And so now I created a file that I'm going to uh, record the video sequence in. So I'll go ahead and uh, but before I record this, start to record this, I want to point out that you have the option of, uh, of the quality of the file that you're storing. And it defaults to, out of a scale of 1 to 100, it defaults to a quality of 75. And the reason that that's important is because if you increase the file size or decrease the file size, there's a direct relationship, or uh, the file image quality, there's a direct relationship to the file size. So if I increase the quality, I'm going to require more storage space. If I decrease the quality, I'll require less storage space. Um, so keep that in mind when you adjust the image quality. But we'll use the default of 75. So I'm going to go ahead and record, hit record, and I'll move this dialog box out of the way. And then I'll simply uh, move the diamond around to show that the sequence is actually recording. So I'm just simply uh, with my hand uh, maneuvering the wire stone holder around to, uh, to show the diamond. And now uh, what I will do is go back in and uh, stop the recording. So I'm going to stop that. Now, <clears throat> during that time period, uh, that particular video sequence at an image quality of 75 was 50 megabytes. So that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big file. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we've stored. So I'm going to minimize the uh, Spec Finder camera program. And I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer and uh, follow the path that I created uh, to store this on my hard drive. So here is the uh, Diamond Video file. And I'm going to open that up. And so this is uh, opening up in the standard uh, Windows software. And as you can see, I'm, uh, I'm moving moving the diamond around and it's showing the video that we took.
and it looks like this video is probably going to be about 40 to 45 seconds. But the quality of the video itself is a very good quality. It's a good image. It's a good representation of the diamond that I'm looking at. And uh, in the bottom here, it's showing the duration of the video, which is right at about 45 seconds. So what that tells me uh, is a 45 second video at the uh, quality format of 75 um, uh, resulted in about a 50 megabyte file size. Um, so if storage space is a concern, you can reduce the image quality. And I've done that and you, you certainly still get an acceptable image, but that will just be up to the judgment of, of the user. So I can go ahead and close that out and open back up the uh, image capture software or the, uh, the spec finder camera software. And um, now what I want to do is take a look at the um, and, and show some of the functionality of the actual um, of the lighting control, which is one of the other icons that we were looking at on the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the ring light control and I'll double click on that. <clears throat> now the ring light is top down lighting on the spec finder. I'll go ahead and turn that on. It's a simple toggle switch that controls the um, LED ring light um, on the spec finder system. And I'm going to just show um, the functionality of this ring light. Um, it, is, it is very important to control the lighting uh, that you're working when you're working with a diamond or any other stone and you you will see that the pattern of this ring light is two rows of 40 LEDs and with the mouse we're able to control um, the lighting all the way down to an individual LED if we want to. Uh, we can uh, um, enable or disable uh, the outer or inner row of the LED ring light. So we can work with one row or with two rows and we can control um, the number of LEDs that are illuminated and then through the slide bar down here we can actually move the light without having um, to, to maneuver or move the stone. So once you get the stone in the position that you want it you're able to control the angle and the direction as well as the intensity of the illumination and that highlights different features of the stone and there's also a mirror pattern so we can control symmetry of the illumination around the stone in different patterns and then we can uh, maneuver those uh, in a variety of ways as well so what I'm going to do now is open up the actual camera viewer and at the same time, I will open up the top-down lighting. And we can um, shrink and minimize that. And then we can also look at the impact that that has as we're viewing the stone. So by maneuvering the lighting, we can see certain features and different defects being highlighted within the stone itself. So the lighting is a very powerful tool, the top-down lighting, and we can actually set this uh, as well in a in a um, auto in an automatic ro uh, mode. So I can hit an auto rotate, and what will happen then is different features of the diamond will become will become highlighted. And so if I wanted to take a video of this, for example, I could do so. Take a video with the illumination um, and I wouldn't have to actually see this dialog box, but I could, I could observe um, the different cut pattern and so forth in the diamond by rotating the LEDs. So the top-down lighting, uh, for those who are interested in top-down lighting and viewing a diamond, is, a, is another powerful tool in viewing diamonds uh, with the SpecFinder system.
So then finally, uh, what I will do um, is, is show another uh, accessory item of the spec finder, which is use of the uh, vacuum uh, pen. And uh, so right now, so far, what we have been using has been the, uh, the wire stone holder. So I'm going to take off the light dome, and then what we'll do is, uh, is remove the diamond and pull off the wire stone holder, which is the standard uh, way of holding a stone with the spec finder system. And then what I'll do is install the vacuum pen assembly. So there is actually a pump. Um, which is placed on the on the floor, and then we have a uh, a long tube that's about a five foot tube, and then we have a micro adjusting stage uh, that once we get the stone set where we want it, um, we're able to simply use these knobs to maneuver uh, the tray. So I'm going to simply install the micro positioning stage into the bracket that comes with the spec finder and then I will remove from the bracket the vacuum pen and then turn on the pump so it's just a toggle switch that turns the pump on and off and then I can pick up the diamond at the culet and the advantage of the vacuum pen is that you don't have the visual encumbrance that you would have with a uh, with the wire stone holder around the girdle of a stone. So it's it's a nice, a very nice tool to use uh, to have a, a full view of the diamond without the hindrance, the physical hindrance of the uh, of the wire stone holder itself. And as you can see, it's very easy to position the diamond um, with the use of the, uh, the micro positioning stage. So once we get this into the field of view, then we can make minor adjustments with the micro positioning stage. So that gives a very, very clear, crisp view of the diamond. Now I'm going to go ahead and put back over the diamond the light dome. And that gives me a very nice, even spread of the lighting. And in order to bring the stone into focus, the distance between the bottom of the lens and the, uh, and, this, and the object that you're looking at, in this case the diamond, uh, is about 90 millimeters. So 90 millimeters is, is the working distance to get the diamond in focus. Uh, once in focus, you can actually then maneuver the diamond. I can turn the diamond and show different areas of the stone. So I'm physically turning the diamond through the knob on the vacuum pen. And then if I want to reposition the stone, I can simply do that by adjusting the knobs on the micro positioner. This also allows me the ability to look at different areas of the stone, not just the top down. So if I wanted to turn this and have a very clear view of the girdle, diamond profile, I can do that. And then I just have to make some minor adjustments to get the stone in focus. And then again, using the knob on the vacuum pen, I can rotate the stone. And all of this can be done um, in, in taking a video at the same time. So you can retain that file for documentation on your server, or you can share that with colleagues or use it as a sales tool. So the vacuum stone holder uh, is a very nice accessory 
to the spec finder system. It's very commonly used and it's, it's very powerful and being able to get a, a very clear image of the stone without the encumbrance of the wire stone holder. And then to adjust the magnification of the spec finder system, we'll just go ahead and turn the variable zoom lens itself. We can zoom way in up to 40 times magnification and then just make some simple focus adjustments. We get a very, very clear image of the object that we're looking at. So for purposes of this short video, um, that is a summary of using the spec finder system. And there are, of course, many other features that um, can be used with the spec finder. And it will be important for the user of the spec finder to spend some time um, with the system uh, in order to familiarize themselves with, the, uh, with all of the different features that are available. It's a very powerful tool. It can be used um, as a selling tool. It can be used uh, to document the quality uh, throughout the manufacturing process. It can be used for inventory purposes. Uh, and it's very convenient and user friendly. So if you have any questions when you get this system, feel free to give me a call. Feel free to contact Dazor. If we need to set up some other short videos for tutorials and training, we can do that. We can also uh, view this over Skype and have a Skype session. So thank you very much. And uh, Kaushal, if you have any questions, give me a call. Thank you.